Kia ora year 11 and 12. I'm going to do a couple of modulus questions and a rather unpleasant partial fractions expansion from assignment for 2017. So here are the two modulus questions. Um, and I'm going to do the first one algebraically. I could do a graph, but I've just tried doing that and I've mucked it all up. I know that most of you vastly prefer to do these questions algebraically anyway. But the second one's an example of why we should always look first. So let's do the first one. We're going to start by squaring both sides because we know that squaring is going to maintain order here. So I've got x minus 2 squared is greater than or equal to 2x minus 3 squared. Now one of the reasons I'm, I want to do this question is because many of you um, didn't factorise. You went straight to the quadratic formula and you mucked it up. This is one where it is going to be super fast to factorise. So let's look at what we get. x squared minus 4x plus 4 it's greater than or equal to 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. So cleaning that up, I'm going to leave 0 on that side, and I get 3x squared minus 12x plus 4 minus 8x plus 5. Right, Ben, if you are watching, um, we have to uh, subtract 4 here, and we end up with a plus 5, not a minus 5. Now, looking at this, I'm going to factorise because I've got a prime number here and a prime number here. So if it does factorise, it's going to factorise very, very easily. So let's have a look. I've got 3x times x. I must have a minus and a minus. The only two numbers that multiply to 5 are 1 and 5. So let's chuck a 1 in here and a 5 in here. Look at that. Faster than the quadratic formula. Now, the next thing I'm, I've got to see is when will I have 0 being bigger than all of this? In, all, in other words, this has to be negative. So let's just look at my graph. I've got 1 here and 5 thirds here. So my answer here is 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5 thirds. Okay, now a couple of you did this beautifully graphically. Um, so that was really well done. I'm going to sketch it very badly now and show you how you could do it that way. But I'm not going to go through all of the working. So we've got one function that looks like that. And then I've got another function, which I'll do in green, which goes more like this. So roughly this situation here. And we can see from the slope that, especially if I draw it better than that, this one is steeper than this one. So this is never going to cross that one again. Um, what we're looking for is when is, we want uh, x minus 2 greater than or equal, that greater than or equal to modulus of 2x minus 3. So we're saying when is the pink one above the green one. So if you do it on a graph, you can see very easily that it's going to be in between those two values. And then what you do is you work with the positive branch or the negative branch of each one, and you solve those. So the pink line is um, this branch of the pink line, which I should do in pink pen is equal to 2 minus x, right? It's not equal to x minus 2 because we have to switch it around. Okay, so we get 2 minus x is greater than or equal to the negative branch of this one here, which is 3 minus 2x. So that's kind of case 1, and that gets me this point here. Then I do the same thing here. This time I'm going to solve, um, again, 2 minus x for the negative pink branch is greater than or equal to 2x minus 3, because I'm now working with this branch here. Anyway, that's doing it graphically. I said I wasn't going to do this. You'll get the same thing. Let's go back up to the second question and have a look at why it's actually really, really straightforward. So um, when will that statement be true? We've got x minus 2 plus 1 minus x is equal to 0. Now, many of you did this, and then you blindly went on and started to square both sides. But think about it. The modulus function is always weakly positive. In other words, it's greater than or equal to 0. And um, negative 1 minus x is going to be less than or equal to 0. So just looking at the left-hand side and the right-hand side separately. This is always going to be a positive number, or 0. And this is going to be a negative number, or 0. So the only time they're going to be equal is if they're 0 at the same time. So let's look at what will make this one 0. If we solve x minus 2 equals 0, we get x equals 2. 
But if we chuck that in the right hand side, we don't get zero. We get negative one minus two, which is equal to negative one, which is not equal to zero. And we can do the same thing with this. So there are no solutions. So there are no real solutions. Now about three of you um, interpreted this question as saying, uh, look at the modulus and go and find me a complex number solution. And you did that. That was great. Um, I'm not going to go through that in here because that wasn't what I'd intended in the question, but that was a perfectly good legitimate answer. Right, now take a deep breath because I'm going to go through this pretty awful um, binomial expansion one. It's not conceptually difficult, it's just very easy to make a mistake. And you can see that it's worth 10 marks in the A-level paper, so that kind of all fits together. So we're given a function here, and the first thing we have to do is a partial fractions breakdown. So let's look at how we do that, and then we have to do, hence, using that, a binomial expansion up to the term in x squared. So there are just a lot of little fish hooks in this question. So let's start off by writing out what the form will be. So f of x is 5x squared minus 7x plus 4, and the denominator is already factorized happily, 3x plus 2 times x squared plus 5. Now, everyone who handed in the assignment did this part really, really well, but I'll just go through it anyway. So we get 5x squared minus 7x plus 4 over this. Now let's think about which pattern type we've got. Well, I'm going to split it into two bits, 3x plus 2 here and x squared plus 5 here. I want to end up with a quadratic up here, so I'm going to generate that by having a uh, a constant here and then a linear factor here. So it's going to be one like this. Then we do the usual stuff. We're going to do top line numerator is equal to a times x squared plus 5 plus bx plus c times 3x plus 2 and we'll expand that out. Well, I could expand it out, or I could just do substitution. There's only one value I can substitute, though, which is going to be a bit messy, but we'll do it. Let x equals negative 2 thirds. So I'm going to sub that in on the left and right-hand side. I get 5 times negative 2 thirds squared minus 7 times negative 2 over 3 plus 4 is equal to a, and I'm subbing it in here, times negative 2 thirds squared plus 5, plus 0, right? All of that becomes 0. So what have we got now? Well, we've got 5 times 4 ninths, plus 14 over 3, plus 4 is equal to, let's see, a times 5 plus 4 ninths. So we're going to get a common denominator of 9, and then clean up. So we've got 20 plus 42, plus 36 is equal to a times 49 over 9. Yeah, you know you're doing well if you get numbers like this. So we've got 98 is equal to 49a, and that's timesing through both sides by 9, giving me a is equal to 2. So I'm going to substitute that back in now. We've got 5x squared minus 7x plus 4 is equal to 2 times x squared plus 5 plus 3x plus 2 bx plus c. So this next bit's pretty easy to do by inspection. Um, we need to end up with 5x squared. We get 5 is equal to 2 plus 3b. Right, so the quadratic bit in here is coming out of there. So b is equal to 1. Now let's work on the constant. Whoops, I've left a whole lot of stuff out here. Don't play around with the x term, it's going to be a little bit more work. And we've got 4 is equal to 10 plus 2c, which leaves me with c is equal to negative 3. So that collapsed pretty quickly, so that's good. We've got our partial fractions bit done, and that's five marks, not that we just care about the marks, there we go, uh, f of x equals this. So 1x, so x 
take away 3 over x squared plus 5. Now, go back to the question and let's see what we've got to do with that. This is the bit that gets a bit yucky. Um, right, hence obtain the expansion of f of x in ascending powers of x up to and, and including this. What we've got to do is instead of working with that expression, we work with the partial fraction version and we're going to do some binomial theorem expansions. Right, so um, maybe pause the video and have another go at this. I'm going to pause the video and do some of the setting up without talking you through it. Okay, so that's your very first line. We know that to use the binomial theorem, we have to have stuff in the form where we have 1 plus something. So we're going to have to muck around with the 5 here and the 2 here. So let's take out some factors. Now this is one of the places that it can go badly wrong. So we've got a common factor here of 2. We're forcing in a 1. So we get 2 times 1 plus 3 over 2x. And that's all to the power of negative 1, including that 2. Plus, the same thing here, x minus 3 times 5 um, into 1 plus x squared over 5 and that's that needs a negative 1 there sorry guys there we go so there's negative 1 so I've got 2 times 2 to the negative 1 which is 1 half times 1 plus 3 over 2x to the negative 1 plus x minus 3 over 5 right because this is 5 to the negative 1 times 1 plus x squared on 5. Now you can do this all in one go, but I think you're probably going to muck it up. So I recommend that you start with separate little binomial expansions. So 1 plus 3 over 2x to the negative 1 is equal to 1 plus negative 1 n times 3 over 2x plus negative 1 negative 2 over 2 factorial 3 over 2x squared. Now that's as far as I'm going to go because I only have to get up to the quadratic term. And then let's do the next one. 1 plus x squared over 5 is roughly equal to 1 plus, oops, negative, uh, so n, negative 1 times this blob here, x squared over 5. So let's see if I need this. And I don't, right, because that's going to give me a term in x to the power of 4. So we can forget about that one. So that will give me, um, you know, I haven't simplified that first one, which was a bit stupid. So I'll chuck it in down here. So 1 plus 3 over 2 x to the negative 1 is equal to 1 minus 3 over 2 x plus 9 over 4 x squared. So that's the first one done. And cleaning up this next one, I get uh, 1 plus x squared to the 5 to the negative 1 is roughly equal to 1 minus x squared on 5. Um, I'm going to put this in just so that you see it vanish further down the track, but you don't need to. So now finally, we're going to get f of x is roughly equal to, well, it's this first bit. But with the second part, I need to be multiplying it by 1 fifth times x minus 3. And then I'll just do 1 minus x squared on 5. Right, because this is going to go, it's, it's going to be a much smaller power than a quadratic. So I've just got one minute to finish this off. Let's see, 1 minus 3 over 2x plus 9 over 4x squared plus... Right, well we've got 1 fifth x, I'm just doing foil here, minus 3 fifths here, um, and then here, so that's that times that, then this is going to be cubic, so we don't care about that, and we get plus 3x squared on 25. So when I combine all of that, here's what I get, I'm going to do a common denominator, on the x's of 10. Okay, so there you go. I stopped the clock just to get that working done. You can see that it's really, really messy, and I know you guys will um, probably use your calculators and the magic FD button for that. That's fine. Just make sure you've shown you're working. Thanks for watching. That's all for tonight.